In this short presentation, I'll provide an introduction to biospheres, what they are, how they work, and what some of the potential benefits and opportunities are. But to start with, we need to clarify just what we're talking about. The biosphere is the parts of Earth, our planet, occupied by living organisms. One could call it the green skin of our planet, where all the people uh, and the plants and animals are living, but also it includes the parts of our seas where plants and animals are living. So that is globally what the biosphere is. But for the rest of this presentation, I'll be talking about what are globally known as biosphere reserves. And those are areas designated by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, as members of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. Oversight of these places around the planet is provided through UNESCO's MAN and the Biosphere, or MAB, program, of which I am the chair of the UK National Committee. At the moment, uh, the World Network of Biosphere Reserves has 714 members in 129 countries, and over a quarter of a billion people live in these places. They're not just remote rural areas, they include some quite large uh, cities, and they cover about 5% of the global land surface and of parts of the sea as well. But what I'm going to be talking about from now on is what we'll call biospheres, because in the UK and some other countries, biosphere reserves designated by UNESCO are referred to as biospheres, partly because the word reserve is restrictive, and in some countries, uh, especially those with indigenous populations, uh, such as Australia and Canada, the word reserve is, has some negative connotations. So it's fine with UNESCO if biosphere reserves are referred to as biospheres or various other words used in other countries around the world. So what is a biosphere? It's a region with a strong identity, and that's certainly true of the Isle of Man. It's globally recognized for its, the quality of its biodiversity and its environment, and for the commitment of a wide range of stakeholders to work together towards a sustainable future. Importantly, it's not restrictive or exclusive. I'll come to, in, in a moment, the the idea of the zonation and the core areas which have to be legally designated by national legislation. But designation by UNESCO as a biosphere does not stop anything happening. It encourages certain things to happen, but the laws of the country, the regulations are the ones that remain in force and UNESCO doesn't impose anything new. A UNESCO has a set of criteria for defining what a biosphere is. There have to be three types of zones, there has to be stakeholder involvement, and there has to be a management policy or plan for the area as a biosphere, and I'll go through these now. First, the zonation. There are three types of zones. The first type is a core area, and there can be more than one of these, as there are on the Isle of Man, which are devoted to nature conservation and legally protected. The second type of zone is the buffer zone or the care areas, which are next to or adjacent to the core areas. And in these, only activities compatible with the conservation objectives of the core areas can be allowed and take place. And these buffer zones or core care areas on the Isle of Man have to have clearly defined boundaries. Most of the biosphere is called the transition area or on the Isle of Man, the sustainable development area. And this is where sustainable development is promoted and developed, as of course it is for the whole biosphere and where most of the people live. Another way of explaining what a biosphere is, is from the fundamental document of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves, which I'll describe in a moment. But this is as a site of excellence to explore and demonstrate approaches to conservation and sustainable development on a regional scale. In other words, it's a global accolade for an area that demonstrates excellence in sustainable development practice. And that's certainly one of the things that the Isle of Man wishes to be recognized for. At the same time, it needs to be said that there needs to be a check about excellence uh, and continuing these, the activities for which a, a biosphere is uh, designated. And so there's a periodic review process every 10 years 
The report is sent to UNESCO at its headquarters in Paris and reviewed by the International Coordinating Council of the Man and the Biosphere Programme. Biospheres have three linked functions. None of is more important than the others, they are connected. Conservation at the top here is one of these functions, conservation of biodiversity, ecosystems, species and genes. But just as important is development for a sustainable future for people. And underpinning those two is research and monitoring to look at what's going on, uh, to understand better the processes of conservation and development. But equally, there is uh, the aspect of education to teach people what a biosphere is, to get young people involved, and training uh, to get people involved in actually specifically doing different activities. So all of these functions are important and they are very clearly linked. The criteria for UNESCO to designate an area as a biosphere are defined in the statutory framework of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves dating from 1995, the fundamental document that I mentioned earlier. And there are a number of these sets of criteria. First is biodiversity, and again, these are not in any order of priority. So biodiversity, an area should encompass a mosaic of ecological systems with different levels of human influence and be significant for the conservation of biological diversity. Second, sustainable development, a biosphere should provide opportunities to explore and demonstrate approaches to sustainable development on a regional scale. Third, the zoning, uh, the area has to be large enough, which the Isle of Man certainly is, and has the zones to serve the three functions of conservation, development, uh, research, monitoring, education, and training that I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> A fourth set of criteria relates to governance. In other words, organizational arrangements for involving a range of stakeholders in designing and implementing the three functions. And a management policy or plan for the area as a biosphere and within this or related to this mechanisms to manage human use and activities in the buffer zones or care areas as they're called in the Isle of Man. And there has to be a designated authority or mechanism to implement this policy or plan and on the Isle of Man this is the stakeholder partnership group. And finally the criteria require programs for research, monitoring, educational, education and training. So basically there are these five sets of criteria and the Isle of Man fulfills all of them. <clears throat> Coming now to the potential benefits and opportunities of a biosphere. Well, really the first is international recognition. De designation as a biosphere is uh, gives a, a region, a place, a globally respected accolade, including the quality assurance. So it recognizes that this is a really special place that the global community recognizes as special. A second aspect of biospheres is very unique for biospheres. It's not the same as for any other sort of UNESCO sites such as World Heritage Sites or Geoparks. And that's that biospheres very much are seen as members of international networks through which to share experience and develop partnerships. And these networks work, uh, work at different levels and different scales. The first one is the World Network uh, of Biosphere Reserves, which I've mentioned before. The second is thematic networks, such as, as the one on coastal and island biospheres, uh, of which the Isle of Man is an active partner. And the third type of network is regional networks. Uh, so for uh, the Isle of Man, uh, is part of the uh, Euromab network, which co currently comprises 303 biosphere reserves, national MAB committees and scientists in 40 countries across Europe and also including North America, in, in other words, Canada and the USA. And Euromab has biennial meetings. Uh, the next one will be in Austria in 2022. It has thematic working groups where people interested in particular topics work on particular themes and projects uh, that are uh, derived from, from membership of the, the 
of, of the MAN and the Biosphere program, allowing uh, biospheres in different countries to work together uh, on projects of all sorts of different types, from communication to sustainable development or biodiversity, conservation, or all sorts of different opportunities. Another set of potential benefits and opportunities relates to the focus on place and identity and the idea that a biosphere is a human natural system whose characteristics can improve through implementing the, the fact that it is a biosphere. And part of the aims of that is to increase pride in the region's natural and cultural heritage and how it's managed and to inject and attract dynamism into local economies. And that then relates to another set of potential benefits and opportunities, marketing opportunities for sustainably produced products or sustainably managed environments. And often in biospheres, these are this is done through branding or charters. For the Isle of Man, there is uh, the pledge, uh, and I've got the picture of that down in the in the bottom of the slide, uh, which uh, partners uh, can sign to show that they agree with the principles of the biosphere and they want to be formal partners of the biosphere. And that really brings together these two sets of opportunities, benefits that I'm showing on this slide. This focus on the place and pride in the region uh, and its natural and cultural heritage and economic opportunities. And then a third set of potential benefits and opportunities relates to the opportunities to uh, bring in uh, lead, uh, support or project funds relating to the quality of the environment, the sustainability of the local economy, or opportunities for education, research and training. But importantly, uh, a biosphere can deliver on government policies, for instance, the sustainable development goals, but equally uh, related to those rural development and environment and nature protection and various other things which are the responsibility for different parts of the government. And at the more local scale, local authorities can refer to the designation as a biosphere in policies for sustainable development. So those are more from the administrative policy governance point of view, but also the funding aspect. So to conclude with, I've, I've given you an overview of what biospheres are, how they work, uh, and some of the potential benefits and opportunities. Um, just to say that uh, the Isle of Man and the UK, there are seven biospheres at the moment, which are shown on this map. Um, they are all uh, down, <laughs> interesting, down the west side of the UK and, and the Isle of Man in the Irish Sea, and two down on the south coast. Other biospheres are currently under development, so uh, we are very much hoping that this family will increase in the near future. So I hope that's been a, a useful introduction to biospheres and that you will uh, want to be part of the uh, Isle of Man biosphere and to contribute to all its very uh, important goals and objectives. Thank you very much.